Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me, but the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter one, verse five through six, it teaches us if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. Well, you know, we are an inspiration uh, to one another. And you just got to remember one thing. Satan tries to cause confusion in the church all the time. And, and listen, um, the best way to handle it is just be honest. If you don't like something, you don't like it. If you do, you do. And so we can clean it up and move on. Because Satan is here to destroy the church. And he can only do it through the humans that claim they're Christians in the church. And so we need to work knowing who the enemy is and knowing what his, his capabilities are and not let him. There's so much going on in our lives. We get caught off guard. And I mean that. I get caught off guard here and there. And I was in a situation uh, the other day and I was just getting so frustrated and frustrated and I heard God speak to me and he said, order it out of your life. Just order it out. And I'm like, you know, humans, you again? <laughs> and so I ordered it out of my life and bang, like that, the situation was resolved. And it's just remembering the power that we have over Satan. We have power over him, but he tries to make us forget that we do. He tries to make us moan and groan and go, whoa, woe is me. Oh my gracious, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Do you remember who did that in the Bible? Job. And then he had some crooked friends that weren't much better for him. And then finally God told him, stand up like a man. And be it, begin to claim what, who I am and what you believe. And when he did that, he prayed for his enemies. And when, after he did that, then things turned around, turned around. So we, we got to remember what we got to remember, you know. And uh, it, it, it's just something else on how hard the devil works to turn us against God. And forget the God that we serve, the God that's our Savior, the God that's going to heal us and bring us out. Amen. Let's... Uh, Let's talk a little bit about today, uh, the sermon is entitled, Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? And sometimes, man, we just forget who we're serving. We forget who our master is. When circumstances arise, we forget. We go into the pity party syndrome. And, and we're good at that now, I'm telling you. And if we're not that good, we usually call up a couple friends, tell them, 
then they call a couple friends, then they call us, and they keep us in the loop all day long. But we've got to take authority over the situation. Just like, just like Job did. Job said, naked I come in the world, naked I go out. Okay, that's settled. Now let's get on with business. Hallelujah. The title of the sermon is, Who is Jesus Christ? Do you remember who he is? Do you remember who he was in your mind when you received him as Lord and Savior? I got several categories that will uh, describe him. He is the wisdom from above. Hallelujah. He is a wonderful counselor. If we need counseling... Go to him, not the phone, not to your friends, because they're going to give you their portion of what, how they think the situation is and how it should be handled. He is the light of the world, okay? The world don't want to see him as the light. They want to see every other light that they created, but not him. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in today. He is the Lord, our righteousness, Really and truthfully, we wouldn't have known righteousness until we know the Lord. Because if you look back on the Old Testament, all we did as we were under the law, the law says do this, do that, do this, do this, do this, do this. Be honest with you, the law really didn't show much love. If you disobeyed, bang, you're punished and you're dealt with. But Jesus Christ, our Lord and our righteous, shows us, reminds us of right and wrong and that he lived in the flesh body as we did and suffered like we did. He's a kinsman redeemer willing to come after you and lay down whatever's necessary to become your redeemer, to redeem you from where you were to where you need to be. He's the tower of refuge. Everyone has seen a tower before, amen? Big tower, you stand up and look. The Bible says a tower of refuge. What is that? A place where you can come running in and running out. Make your requests known. What you ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, he will hear it. He's the resurrection and the life. You're not going to find it from any other of these religious gurus you're not going to find the resurrection and the life the only individual that you can go to the grave site in, in the tomb let's just say the tomb and find it empty the shroud is the proof it has his fingerprints his face prints in it you can't deny it wasn't there because he was there no, no, no other guru can ever match that expectation. He's the prince of peace. When you know, when you want peace, you go to him because he's the prince of peace. We can't afford to try to make peace on our own without him inviting him in. He's the Lord, our provider. When we need provision, he's there to provide for us. And you know what all these circumstances fall under? Everyone say this with me. Remembrance. Again, I talked earlier about distraction. We get distracted so much, we can't remember all we are in Christ and all we have in Christ and all that was promised us in Christ. The Lord, our provider. And the thing that Satan tries to interrupt so much, brothers and sisters, is our communication with God. Stop you from praying. Uh, Have a pity party. Oh, woe is you. But when we keep the conversation open with God, say, Lord, I got a problem down here. I kind of need you to kind of step up a little bit. Show me hope. You give me encouragement. Beside on what I heard about my, my health situation or, or my dilemma with my home, I, I, I need you to step up. I need you to step up because my trust is in you, not in uh, them, but it's in the highest tier that I know of. 
He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Do you hear me? He didn't begin something and stop something and then walk off and say, oh yeah, I'm taking a sabbatical. He stuck it out from the beginning uh, even until Christ came. He brought him in. The author, the finisher of our faith. What's the finisher? The finisher is Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary as the only last sacrifice that needs to be made for mankind. He's the great physician. Here, man, that's beautiful, isn't it, Sylvia? The great physician. He knows the intricates of this body better than anyone. And the doctors he gives an itty-bitty little bit of wisdom for them, to them, and some of them think they're God. But let me explain something to you. Every test that I've had made, every doctor that I went to see, I pray first. I say, Lord, give them the wisdom and the knowledge to see what they need to see, not what they want to see. Don't, characteristic, don't characterize me as I'm just another case. But give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need. Because I'm your child. And we've got to put him over every situation. He's the brand of life. The brand that we should follow. The brand of life that he has made us to become. He's the good shepherd. Everyone say good shepherd. We're not following any bad shepherds, no imitated shepherds, but we're following the good shepherd. And, and somebody may ask me today, what is a good shepherd? The good shepherd is willing to leave the 99 and go back after the strayed one and bring them back to the fold. Where some people might say, where are you going? Where are you going? She ain't nothing. Just let her go. She's been trouble since she was born. But God's going back to get that one. Why? Because he looks at the heart. The heart. He's the Alpha Omega. The beginning and the end. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And this is the greatest reason to look unto him for all of us. You and I. Look unto him. Because when there is shown to us many ways, he is the way, the truth. And the life. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the great high priest. Why would you list him as the great high priest? Because when Jesus Christ came as the great high priest, he not only was the high priest, but he was the sacrifice. And he presented us before God. And now as he atoned for us, our sins now when we pray we ask the father in the name of jesus christ he is not just the high priest he's the last priest the only priest that stands between us and god the great i am there's no other there's no other there's no other if you meet anyone in this day and time that says they're looking out for you, there is no other. He's the great I am. You know what you need to say when someone says, I'm looking out for you, I'm going to take care of you. You just look up and say, Lord, take care of them. So that they may be able to take care of me. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to give you all the credit. He's our all in all. We can just keep our minds stayed upon him. And this all falls under, the, under wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is having the ability to think wisely, honest, honesty, honestly, sincerely, with understanding. Those are things that, that we need to pray for continuously. If we as Christians... And the children of God are seeking wisdom that is already put before us. And, and in many cases, wisdom is already put before us. But ignorantly, we have not picked it up, exercised it, exercised its full extent. But 
if we would do so, we would understand who Jesus Christ is in us. That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved. So we're in the Word, we know the Word, we understand the Word, and it's nothing foreign to us. As we look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. This, now this is, um, uh, the writer is talking about, this is Solomon, talking about wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom with all thy getting get understanding this is what made him the wisest person because at one time he saw God all the time all the time all the time and God wants us to go after wisdom wisdom is the principal thing he tells us we are not to go after riches but when we have wisdom all the things we seek will follow after us including honor and length of days so you never make riches your goal it's up to God if he wants to allow you to be blessed with riches and that's why Solomon was blessed with riches in the in the toward the end it went to his head but God just gave him that as a bonus because when he asked him what do you want from me he told him I want wisdom to be able to guide your people and God said, I didn't, you didn't ask for wisdom, I mean, uh, riches, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. And we all know what comes with riches. The wrong people. As soon as they see you got this, you got that, they're coming to see you. And if your mind's not focused, you'll lose focus. Proverbs 3.16, length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. What are we trying to do here, brothers and sisters? Balance it balance it. James 1 5, if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraidedly not and I shall and it shall be given unto him if he ask. My friend if you lack wisdom simply ask God for it. Ask him for it. Talk to him. He will give it to you liberally and without reproach. The truth is that he has already given you wisdom when he gave you Jesus Christ who became for us wisdom, the wisdom from God. Woo! He did it. He did it. He did it. He gave us the greatest source of wisdom. And guess what? It wasn't just spiritually brothers and sisters it was physically we even had a chance to see him in action when he was in the temple broke up the tables ran the money changers off we saw him in action and that's more than we can even ask for first corinthians 1 30 but of him are ye in Christ? How many of you are in Christ? How many of you know that? How many of you can't be talked out of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But of him are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That's a lot, but listen to what, it's, what it means. Righteousness, knowing right from wrong. Sanctification, set apart from the world. Redemption, being redeemed unto God. And that's through Jesus Christ. Beloved, you are most blessed to have Jesus and who, res who resides all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in you. And we need to, when we, we, we need to do, do it through the course of the day. It's got to be something that we make a desire to practice. And when we pray, we need to ask God for wisdom. If you don't have nothing you want to pray about, just when you think about him, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Don't be praising nobody. Don't be giving somebody else glory. When somebody blesses you, say, thank God for you. Don't let God be out of the equation. 
Because God is the one that actually brought that person to you. And it was God through them that brought the answer that you were looking for. I think of Scott when, he, when the guy came up to him about buying his motorcycle and then selling him another one. He had, he had a prayer in his heart. It was in his heart. That's what he wanted. God responded. He sent someone that had a higher desire for that bike and to buy it, and the other person had a higher desire to sell him his or give him his. That's how God works. But we can't keep our minds off of him. When prosperity comes in the blessing, blessings flow, and the blessings flow, do not be boastful with pride, but give Jesus the praise and the glory. And it should not be our faith in ourselves but it should be faith in Jesus Christ in the faith that he has in himself to perform promises that he has made for us now this last sentence is just powerful and and many people don't even think about this but listen I'll, I'll read it again but it should be faith in Jesus Christ that's what we should have in faith that he has Jesus has in himself Jesus don't doubt himself. He doesn't doubt any of the words that he has said and, and is coming to pass. He doesn't doubt anything or those that are coming to pass even at the end. To perform the promises that he has made before us. Don't pout. If you're in trouble, just give the Lord a shout. Amen. 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 Father, thank you again for your presence, your power, which definitely increases our faith in you as we go through whatever we're going through, Lord. You are the most powerful entity that we could know, that we could praise. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came as a reality, not just words written on a scroll, but he appeared to fulfill the word. He said, I didn't come to do away with the word, but to fulfill it. And we thank you, Father, for your continual love in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the pastor.com YouTube channel. We encourage you to continue to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. Again, this ministry encourages everyone of, um, of importance to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and realizing how much you need him and ask Jesus into your heart, which is your mind. And in doing so, we have an advocate with the Father that when we repent and ask for forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. One of the most challenging moments that we all will face is accepting his forgiveness and receiving it. But let me tell you, practice makes perfect. We may not feel comfortable the first time around, but as we keep receiving him and his forgiveness, it, it'd be like um, nature. And knowing that someone loves you as deeply as God Almighty. He himself has proven that by bringing his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross of Calvary, to absorb all of the sins that we all have committed and yet have the power to forgive us. So keep that in mind. We love you and we look forward to having you join us doing our next lecture. God bless you. Till next time. As soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ain't I let go and I let God I let God have his way yeah. 
That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then. When I let go and I let God. I let God have his way. Mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace But the peace I could not find Oh, but then I, I kneeled down to pray I was praying, help me please But he said you don't have to cry Supply all your needs Soon as I stop worrying oh. Worrying how the story is oh. When I let go and I let God Let God have his way That's when things start happening Let go. Oh, let go. Let go. And just let God. Let God. Oh.